Hey you guys, this is Josh with Homesteading Family. And you know, a wood cook stove has become very central to our homestead. It is how we heat a major part of the house and how we cook a lot of our food. But to make a wood cook stove work well for you, you've really got to know how to fire it properly. So today I'm going to take you through all the steps of using your wood cook stove. Okay, so first we're gonna cover all the parts of a stove. Now, every wood cook stove is different. There's lots of different manufacturers, but they all function pretty similarly. So you're, you're gonna have your cooktop. Your surface is usually going to have a very hot area that's over the fire, and as you move away from the fire, it's gonna cool off a little bit so that you have different temperatures to work with. Next, you're gonna have the oven. There are different size ovens. Usually you've got some shelves. This one's removable and we can put in different places. You want a thermometer. Um, most uh, ovens today have them. Some of the older ones don't. If you don't have a thermometer like this in the door, you want one of the little thermometers that you can place in your oven. Next, you have the firebox. You usually have two accesses to your firebox. This is the front access. The grate is in there. This is where you're gonna build your fire. You also have a top loading feature on most stoves to uh, load your fire from here. And we'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Next, you have the ash bin. And because these are small, you have to maintain this regularly. Again, we'll talk about this in a few minutes, but somewhere you're going to be able to remove the ashes. Then you have the controls of your firebox, which is to control the airflow. There is usually a lower uh, air control that allows you to uh, increase or decrease the air. Sometimes there are two of these on the side. It just depends on the stove. Somewhere you're going to have a control that um, limits or allows more airflow through the flue pipe. It might actually be in the flue pipe. It might be in your stove. On this stove here, it's right in the top. We also have, and many stoves do, the ability to control how the air circulates around the oven so that you can control the oven temperature. Now, this is a really handy feature. Not every stove has this, but this is a bit of a warming box. You can see in here that Carolyn has some sourdough rising and she's got some yogurt culturing. You can also keep meals warm for somebody coming in late or out of the cold. And then of course, we've got our tools. Every stove is different. This stove actually has several different tools that we'll get into in a minute. Some of them just have one, but you need those as well. All right, before you actually get to building a fire, you need to know a little bit about wood. It's really, really important to use the right wood in your stove for a good fire and for good maintenance of your stove over time. So, one of the key things is moisture content. No matter what kind of wood you have access to, your wood needs to be dry. And it's really handy to have a moisture meter. And, but you need to know that your wood is below 25% moisture. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of creosote buildup and uh, your fire's not going to burn as efficiently. And there's going to be more opportunity for flu fires, which you don't want. So uh, I've got a few examples of wood here. The um, other thing you need to know is that uh, a, a wood burning cook stove is going to use smaller fuel than your traditional um, wood uh, stove or fireplace. And so you, you need smaller pieces. You're going to need your regular kindling. You're going to use a lot of what we just call stove wood. Uh, pieces in this side size, uh, maybe a little slightly bigger. We use this a lot for getting a fire going, which I will show you in a minute. And then a lot of your regular pieces are gonna be about, this is about as big as it's gonna get, maybe a little bit larger for banking the fire at night. And, um, but what's really important to remember again is that moisture content and something else that you may or may not have access to are energy logs. Now, for some of you, these might be really expensive. In our area, they manufacture them right here. They're a byproduct of the mill, so it's a really good use of resource. These are very dry, very dense, 
They fit into the stove very well and have a high, high BTU rating. So um, we will use these particularly if um, we're not up on our stock of woods, wood, firewood here on the homestead. All right, now on to starting your initial fire. And we are working with a stove completely cold. Once you get going and you're keeping your wood-burning stove going, it's rarely going to be completely cold. But we want to start from scratch here. Say you're coming in in the morning, just getting this thing going. It's burned out overnight and you're working with it cold. So some of the things I'm going to do right here when it's warm, uh, you wouldn't want to do like grabbing the handles when it's hot. But right now, because it's cold, the first thing I want to do is check the ash bin and you want to empty the ash bin regularly. On this stove, we empty it, empty it every two to four days. But this will pile up and limit your airflow. So it's really important to keep it clean. Now we keep a nice galvanized bucket here close by. Of course, you do not want to use a wood bin, cardboard, or anything like that for your ashes. You could have some coals in here. When you've been burning the fire, that could start a fire. But this galvanized bucket is perfect for this. And this just has to go out every couple of weeks. Okay. You want to make sure your doors are always locked down tight, that they're not leaking air. Next, we're going to open up all of our air controls. So we want to have this fully open. This is going to allow the fire to get plenty of air. Here we're opening the top one, it goes out the flue pipe. So that this fire has plenty of air because we want to get it going hot and fast. Now we need to build the fire. If you need to, depending on your grate, when you're getting going, you may need to get in here and just scrape the ashes a little. Would have been good if I would have done this before I emptied the ash bin. But nonetheless, that makes sure that grate is clear and the air coming in through below it can move and circulate through your fire. Now you can use newspaper, some cardboard, but you want to get enough newspaper in there to catch your kindling on fire. Now, if your wood's dry like it's supposed to be, you really do not need a whole lot of paper. We don't need to fill this whole box with paper. Just enough to catch the kindling on fire quickly. Okay, we're going to get our kindling in. Now, one thing that folks that have trouble with that haven't started a lot of fires is sometimes they'll pile the kindling on top of the paper and it ends up pressing the paper down and it smolders. So you want to have a way to prop up your kindling. This stove's got a nice little ledge right here. This is going to help hold the kindling above the paper as it burns again so that it has lots of airflow. Trick with getting a good fire going is enough space between the pieces so that the air will move through um, but not so far apart that it's not catching the fuel quickly. Now when you're getting going, you're first starting your fire of the day, even if your stove is warm, you don't want anything too large. It is really important to get a good hot fire going for 15 minutes to a half an hour. And so you don't want to start it with a lot of big pieces, uh, just enough to get this really going. All right, so while this fire is getting going, I just wanted to share a little bit with you about how a wood cook stove works and why it's really important to uh, get your burn going in a certain order. And particularly to get your fire going hot and quick and you're going to burn a lot of fuel like this when you're first starting it up and that's counterintuitive to some people however two things need to happen when you're getting your stove going you're needing to heat up the body of the stove um, a lot of them are cast iron that's certainly my preference is for a good cast iron stove and this flue is cold all the way up through your roof 
And so you need to get the pipe heated up. That gives your fire a good draw so that as you damp it down and as you use it throughout the day, you've got a good draw to draw the heat through, keep your fire burning without overburning it. So it's really, really important to get this fire going hot and quick, full open. The other thing that it does is it burns out any of the creosote that might start to build up in here and it helps keep your flue clean and prevent flue fires. All right, so we're about a little over five minutes into our burn and we just wanna check on the fire. Okay, so this is burning good, but we've burned up some of our fuel and we need to add to it right now to keep it going really hot. And on this stove, I'm gonna do this from the top. It's just easier to load and keep the structure of the fire uh, burning nice and hot. You may want Okay, so the fire is stoked now and it just needs to keep burning good and hot for a little while. We consider a wood cook stove essential to just about any homestead. It is a very multi-functional tool. Your wood cook stove can not only heat your home and cook your food, obviously, do your baking for you. It can also heat your water for you. It can also keep a lot of different things warm. This is aiding and rising some sourdough, helping you with different uh, ferments and incubating your yogurts and other cultures. Along with, if you needed to, and we've done this before in the past, you can even dry your clothes by it. Okay, so our fire is burning good and hot. It's been going for about 15 minutes. This flue is really heated up. It's too hot to touch. And we wanna to start to wind it down just a little bit. So we're gonna close down the top air control. What that's gonna do is start to bank the heat into the stove and heat up our stove better now that we've got the flue working. And for this stove, I just use this thermometer and I'm looking for the oven to get up to about 350, 400. That's kind of our maintenance level for the day. So we've gotta let it burn here just a little bit longer before we add our final fuel for the moment and, and go into daily maintenance mode. Okay, so we have been burning for about 45 minutes and the stove is getting up to temperature. We're a little over 350 in the oven, which is my gauge for having it heated up right about where I want it. So we are going to load it up one more time and we're good to go. Now you can load at this point from the front or the top. I prefer loading from the top. Sometimes the bigger wood you want to get in at this stage is just a little easier to drop right in. Okay, so we've got a good little bed of coals in there. We've got some fresh larger pieces in the firebox and we want to go ahead and slow down the inflow. We've already closed the upper airflow and we're going to go ahead and turn this. Be careful, these can get very hot so you want a tool or something or a glove. And now where you set this depends on what you're gonna do for the day. If you're just heating the house and you're not cooking, you've got your stove up to temperature, you're gonna shut this almost all the way, just a slight crack to keep a low burn, keep the heat going and warm your house. If, and, and you can also usually at that stage uh, boil water or put some things on to cook in here. If you're going to want to get several different items going on your cooktop or you're going to want to use the oven then you're going to have to make some decisions based on what you're doing in how you want the stove to fire which mostly you're going to control with your lower airflow you can open or close this to increase or decrease the airflow which is going to increase or decrease your heat and if you have a control for the oven like some do you can also adjust that to allow the air to circulate, the hot air to circulate more over the, or around the oven or not, if you're gonna bake, to get to your desired temperature. And you just manipulate that however you want to for the day. Okay, so you are all set to use your wood cook stove for the day and adjust it as you need 
We're going to come back a little while later and I'm going to show you how to bank your fire for the night to keep some heat into the house throughout the night. Okay guys, so you've been maintaining a good fire in your stove all day. You've maybe cranked it up a little bit when you need to use the stove, but you've also not let it go out and kept a good bed of coals. And uh, while it's not dark outside for us, we're gonna show you go how to go ahead and wind it down at the end of the day and bank your fire. That is just how to create a nice slow burn so that you maintain coals all night long and keep some heat going into the house and hopefully have some coals in the morning to start your fire with and that just helps get the process going all the better. So let's take a look at our coals and see what we've got going here. Oh yeah, that is just about perfect. You've got a nice couple logs that are fully coals and it's just ready to add some good solid wood. And this is a point where you can put some larger pieces in that you fit and basically fill this up. Um, now what we do want to do though in the beginning is go ahead and open your lower air control. Get a little air flowing through there because we do want to get a burn on. And as long as you've got good coals, you're going to leave this top one closed. If you're having to crank the fire up, then you can open that for 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, and we're gonna add the wood in. I like at this point to add it from the top, it's just easier. There's not a lot of smoke, just a little bit of heat. These energy logs are great if you have them, you don't need them, but they do real well overnight. And I'm just gonna fill this firebox up. You can do that from the front, but honestly the top's a lot easier because you can get it full. Now we want to leave it open for just 10 to 15 minutes, burn off the moisture and um, start to get those getting a good burn on them. And then we will just close this down. And if you have an older stove, you can probably close it down all the way because you've probably got a few leaks in there. You'll just, you'll get to know your stove. If it's a newer stove, you want to leave this just ever so slightly cracked and it will, you know, the type of wood you have will burn differently. So you'll just have to learn with your stove and your wood where the exact spot is. But the idea is, is you've got a good bed of coals, you're adding some wood, you're burning off the initial moisture, and then you're just turning that down and you get a nice slow burn. And the heat from your stove will help keep heat there so that that burns all night long and keeps your house warm. And like I said, hopefully you've got some coals to get started with in the morning. Uh, that's it guys. I hope this video has uh, helped you and inspired you to either get a cook stove, think about having one and all the benefits of it, and certainly uh, tune up your game a little bit with using your wood cook stove. We'll see you soon.